Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. If you need tools, materials for your next building project, turn to Knoxville's oldest, best supplier of said building materials and tools. That would be A.G. Hines Company. I can say they're the oldest and the best because they've been around for more than 100 years. Think about that. That is an amazing accomplishment. Four generations of the Hines family have been involved in A.G. Hines Company. Go find out for yourself why a company has lasted that long. I mean, it's proven value. They'll take care of you, whatever your needs are for your next building project. All right, let's welcome in two VFLs that we have with us today. Two guys will be with us every Sunday starting next week in our post-game shows. Will Overstreet, former of all right here, and former of all Daniel Hood right there. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. Appreciate it. Uh, I have been hearing a lot of yawning with regards to Bowling Green, except when it's been mentioned that Tennessee could possibly lose, then the yawning becomes guffawing. Uh, my question for you guys, look, Bowling Green was awful last year. They were, they were absolutely terrible, 0-5 in the five games that they played against MAC opponents. Um, they, they were 0-2 against uh, Power 5 opponents the year before that, and they lost both games 52 to nothing. This is not a great program. I get it. But is it really laughable that Tennessee could conceivably fall? To Bowling Green? I mean, are we to the point where Tennessee fans should be comfortable with any FBS opponent and say, ah, it's a gimme? No, there is no gimme. I mean, Georgia State, we, we don't have to be that far away. Two whole years ago, people Yeah, two whole years ago, <laughs> we showed up and, it, you know, kind of the same situation, right? I mean, somebody you should walk out, throw your helmet out in the field, and walk away with a victory. I, I don't think anybody at this point, I mean, Tennessee, we've seen over the last couple of years find a new low, right? Every year you thought it was as low as it could go. You lost to Vanderbilt, holy cow. Then you're at the bottom of that, you lose to Kentucky and Vanderbilt. And then all of a sudden you lose to a Georgia State. I mean, you can't put that away right now. This team has the same guys on it that lost to Georgia State. They're not used to winning. This is not a program that knows how to win right now. They've got to learn that. So I don't take, I don't take anything away. I don't want to be Nebraska today, right, after – Illinois, the worst team in their league, supposed to walk right through. Not going to happen. I think this team has to take every game as that team can beat us. And I don't think it's an illegitimate question to say that and to say that they better be thinking that way. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves in a bad situation. Daniel, you agree or disagree? Uh, I, I don't see this team with, with really a chance to beat Tennessee, especially when you look at how their past games have played. Um, and I think the difference between really this staff and some of the other ones is it seems that they're focusing on the activities that will lead to wins. Um, and I would, I would kind of challenge fans that too. I don't, I don't think we should ever really focus on if, if it's going to be a win, focus on if it's going to be a loss, but focus on what are the activities that get you to a win. What are the details they're playing with? How are, you know, their passion, their energy, and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's still Tennessee, it's still Bowling Green. First game of the season, I don't, I don't see Tennessee even, or, or this Bowling Green team even being in the same neighborhood with them. That's why in our three up, three down segment, you are a vulture and he is a dove. <laughs> um, but I also got to play in three of those games. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I just I saw Western Kentucky. Yeah, the yeah. thing about uh, the Bowling Green thing, I get that Bowling Green, Chuck, isn't as good as Georgia State. Now, Georgia State was no great shakes when they came in here, but Bowling Green is worse than Georgia State was. Tennessee is worse than it was two years ago can't lose 35 bodies off your team and not be worse. You're hoping that the system will rise above that and make up the difference. And I may, and I may be screaming it on next Sunday. Hell yeah, that system's the answer, baby. <laughs> but I haven't seen the system yet. So right. I'm more on the will camp. Where are you? Is this well, a lock? No, I, I don't believe in locks, to tell you the truth. But, but I did That's see... That's not what I've heard from uh, well, the Chuck Casino, <laughs> Casino a time or two. But I right. did see a 95% probability Tennessee okay. wins the game. But put it, put it into perspective. Georgia State, Tennessee was, what, a 26-point favorite? You're going to be a 34-point favorite in this game. It would be the biggest upset in Tennessee history. So Bowling Green would have to have like some kind of shock play, or they got to do something totally different to me offensively that you've not prepared for, that all of a sudden they come out and pull this off. But the one thing I like, guys, to me there's something – magical about Neyland Stadium, a night game, 8 o'clock kickoff, and the lead up to that. I like that much better than if this was like a noon kickoff. So I, I, I think 
Tennessee's going to come out ready to play. I really do. You've got a lot of new stuff that we'll talk about later that Danny White and UT are implementing. So, yeah. uh, you know, you're right. Your team shouldn't sleepwalk through it. But, boy, it is hard for me to forget watching a Tennessee team sleepwalk through that Georgia State yeah. thing. And I'll also right. say this. I, I've seen a couple of games where, wow, pick six with the other. Wow, pick six with the other. That's it. Yeah. You throw, you, couple, of, couple of touchdowns going the wrong way can even that thing up. I know we're saying that Bowling Green has to have something on offense. Unless you're bungling so much in your first game in this offense for Tennessee that you hand a few plays to them or give them the ball to the right. five-yard line. So I I'm, I think Tennessee's going to win, and we'll do our predictions later. I think Tennessee's probably going to win handily. But I'm not willing to, well, see, to bet me, the lock my life would be, on anything with Tennessee I was talking this about it's not a lock that Tennessee covers the 34 is what I was talking about. I'm, I, always, I still like Tennessee to win yeah. the game. Yeah, there's, always, the there's, there's Yeah, the Cavaliers <laughs> line is always moving. It's a moving target. All right, guys, uh, hang with us, you two. We're going to rotate Bob Hodge in here next, and I want to talk about tempo. Does the tempo make you more excited about the offense or more worried about the defense? Got a former couple of defenders here, so we'll get there. Hey, that's next on the Sports Source. Come on back, folks.